In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Lamy CP1 fountain pen. I'll go over the background, the specs, do a writing sample, and then give you my pros and cons for this pen. So stay tuned. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink. And as always, I link out the show notes and put links in the description below. Let's get on with the review. This is the Lamy CP1 fountain pen. It has a black matte lacquered metal body with a spring-loaded stainless steel clip. It has a plastic ribbed grip section and a stainless steel nib, the same type that you would get on a Lamy Safari. Now it takes a cartridge or a converter. This is the Lamy T10 cartridge. It does take a proprietary cartridge, uh, but it is a relatively large one. So by comparison, you can see this is a standard international cartridge. So it has quite a bit more ink capacity, which is a nice benefit. Now, if you want a converter, the one that you want is the Lamy Z27 converter, the one with the black piston knob. The one with the red piston knob only fits the Lamy Safari, the All Star, and its variants like the, the Joy and the, and the Vista. It has um, two little like bumps on the side of it and it won't fit in this pen. So let's go over the size and weight of this pen. So in terms of the overall length, it's about 135 millimeters when capped. And uncapped, we're looking at about 120. The cap itself is about 49, 48. And when posted, this pen is just a hair over 160 millimeters, call it 161 millimeters. In terms of how thin this is, just to give you a idea here, it is 9.3 millimeters and 8.5. So you don't really lose too much to the, the grip section from the body, which is good. Weight, oh, hello. Let's see, and keep in mind this is with the cartridge in there. So about 19 grams when capped, 10.5 grams uncapped, and 8.59 grams for the cap. So the cap is somewhat heavy compared to the body. So when you post this, you might feel a bit of the weight up high. So a little bit on the background of this pen, I believe it was designed in the late 60s, early 70s, and it was designed by Gerd A. Mueller. He was a industrial designer at Braun, and he also designed this pen, the Lamy 2000. This one gets a lot of attention for its design, and there are some really nice well thought out, well engineered pieces to this pen. This pen is a lot more simple, but in my opinion, I think it's even better looking. It also comes in a platinum guilloche bodied version with a 14 karat gold nib. That version I believe is called 5.3. This black matte lacquered version is called 5.6. This is the standard one. This goes for about $60, whereas the Platinum version is somewhere between $250 and $300. Now there's an older version of this pen that came in a few more finishes. It was slightly slimmer than this, still called the CP1, but they had um, model numbers 50 through 59, so there were 10 different versions of that older pen. And because it was slightly slimmer, it does not fit the Z28, or not, excuse me, the Z27 cartridge. It used a squeeze sack aerometric cartridge, which 
I do not believe Lemmy makes any more. Okay, Lemmy CP1 writing sample. So, Lemmy CP1 fountain pen with extra fine nib and Lamy blue ink. So in terms of fast writing, not that you would not write this fast, but it really does just kind of keep up. I don't have any issues of skipping with this pen. It, um, yeah, I mean, Uh, this pen doesn't really do too well with reverse writing, where you turn the nib over and write it upside down. It's, I'm just going to say, nah, it can't do it. It, it can't. Um, one other thing that I should mention, these nibs are replaceable. Uh, they just pull straight off of the feed. There's no, um, there's nothing tricky about removing these nibs. And you can easily buy different nibs from Lamy that fit this pen. So if you wanted a stub nib or an oblique nib, you could just pull this off and buy one of those. $13 is the, the retail price for these steel nibs, um, but I've seen them as low as $6. So you buy this pen and you can have a whole bunch of different nib widths to use with it. The other thing, if you have a Lamy pen with a gold nib, like this Lamy accent, you can pull this nib off of here, stick it on here, and you have a gold nib on your Lamy CP1. So it's just nice to have all of those options and have it available, at least with the steel nibs, in a for an affordable price. The Lamy CP1 box, it is a paper box with a paper outer sleeve. Um, yes, even this is paper. It comes with a tag, which basically just sits like this. Shows the price and the model, number 56. Comes with a plastic sleeve. It also comes with one of those T10 cartridges, which I have in the pen. This is like a, a brochure and directions for all these different pens. And that's it. I mean, you can put cartridge in there or a converter. It does not, is not sold with a converter, so you have to buy that separately. The Lamy CP1 fountain pen. Pros and cons. What do I like about it? Well, I definitely like the clean, minimalistic design. I like that the cap sits flush on the pen body when capped and when posted. I like the easy-to-use spring-loaded stainless steel clip. I also like that the grip section is relatively thick compared to the pen barrel. That is a nice thing to have on a pen that is really slim like this. I like that the nibs are interchangeable and not particularly expensive. I also like that this pen fits in a Midori MD leather notebook cover. This cover has a tiny little pen loop in the back, and this is about one of the only pens that I've ever been able to get in here. The other pen that can do this is the Aurora Hastile, which is even slimmer than this. So things that I don't like about this pen. Well, really the only downside that I can think of is that it's skinny. So if you're writing pages and pages of notes or journaling, 
this isn't going to be my number one pen. It's just a bit too thin. It will become uncomfortable at some point. Also, when posted, you know, your time in the comfort zone is going to be reduced because this is, the cap is relatively heavy and it posts quite um, far up on the, the body. So if you're looking for a fountain pen for doing lots and lots of long writing sessions, I would probably pick a thicker pen. But for a office pen for writing notes just to have on your desk, this is one of my favorite pens, fountain pens with a modern design. So that is the Lummi CP1 fountain pen. Do you guys like this pen? Do you guys have this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked this video, please click the like button and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more fountain pen and paper and ink review videos. Thank you so much. See you guys next time.